Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Mauser Electronics, the electronic components distributor with the widest selection of the newest products. We're watching Gabrielle like a hawk, calling out curiosity, riding a motorcycle at 400 miles per hour, and finding out what the Fox has to say about the McLaren P1. What does the Fox say? The Global Hawk 872 returned to its nest at NASA's Wobbs Flight Facility in Virginia after its sixth science mission headed investigating the remnants of Tropical Storm Gabrielle, which reformed 30 miles south-southwest of Bermuda on Tuesday. Top winds for the storm have reached up to 60 miles per hour, and NASA dispatched the 872 from its fleet of former military surveillance drones to help understand how the storm intensifies. Ultimately, NASA believes that such information could help save lives by improving forecast models in predicting hurricane strength. While NASA has yet to release initial results, information has been made available from a previous flight over Hurricane Carl, a destructive tropical cyclone that hit Mexico in 2010. As you can see, the UAV monitors the storm, enabling NASA's best to watch the eyewall develop. The blue indicates reflectivity under 6 kilometers, the yellow reaches 7.5, the orange is 10 kilometers above the surface, and the red reaches 12 kilometers high. Designed to perform high-altitude, long-endurance recon and intel missions for the Air Force, the Flock of Hawks has found a new path as part of NASA's research missions. Capable of spending nearly 30 hours in the air at a time, the Hawks can reach altitudes of up to 19.8 kilometers, making them much more desirable than manned aircraft. And after watching Denzel flip a plane over in an attempt to land it, I just might not mind an unmanned cockpit. Yeah, pilots actually tried that, didn't work. We've all been enamored with the discoveries that NASA's Curiosity rover has made on the Red Planet. Besides the fact that a man-made SUV-sized robot is currently cruising an alien world, researchers at the American Geophysical Union say that when it comes to the science, Curiosity is a dummy. Over vast distances, it takes information like commands and environmental analysis several minutes to travel from Earth to a rover and back again. It's about a 40-minute round trip to communicate with Curiosity, and it would be far more on a planet that was further out. Only recently have the Curiosity pilots started using autonomous control, but its science work still requires transmitting images. The researchers have developed the Texture Cam to help future rovers make autonomous decisions, giving the opportunity for better research and more productive results. Texture Cam uses stereo cameras to take 3D images, and a processor separate from the rover's main computer would analyze the images. The system recognizes the difference between sand, rocks, and sky, and uses size and distance calculations to determine if the rocks are scientifically pertinent. With some minor training, like giving an example of what to look for, the system can seek out, navigate to, and perform experiments on soil and rocks autonomously. Technology like this is absolutely necessary if we plan to get more ambitious and put rovers on asteroids or Jupiter's moon Europa. TextureCam's creators are hoping to hitch a ride on the next Mars rover mission planned for 2020, or future terrestrial alien endeavors. What the fuck say? <laughs> In an attempt to restore Triumph Motorcycle's legacy in land speed racing, Matt Markstaller, Bob Carpenter, and Jason DeSalvo have come together to design, build, and ride the world's most advanced streamliner, the Castrol Rocket. With the current speed record of 376.156 miles per hour set by Rocky Robinson back in 2010, the Castrol team is setting their sights on 400 miles per hour, with professional motorcycle racer Jason DeSalvo sitting up front with the engine behind him, both down low, between the wheels, up high, too slow. Sorry about that, I got a little carried away. Looking more like something from science fiction, this two-wheeler is powered by a pair of Triumph Rocket 3 1485cc three-cylinder engines that have been turbocharged and tuned by Carpenter Racing to put out a combined 1,000 horsepower. The team has already been testing the bike on the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah, but they better hurry because Robinson is planning to break his own record by cracking the 400 mile per hour barrier with his Akatak bike. Not too long ago, McLaren tested its new P1 at the Arctic Circle. But now they've taken to the American desert to finish off the testing. In grueling temperatures sitting around 125 degrees Fahrenheit, the P1 made attempts to reach its 217 mile per hour top speed, but McLaren hasn't given up any details on the car's survival just yet. 
The P1 is considered a performance hybrid with its 3.8 twin turbo engine and a rear mounted electric generator, generating 727 and 176 horsepower respectively. That totals around 903 horsepower for the special edition hot rod. The company is set to start delivering the sports car in the next couple of weeks, for those that can foot the $1.2 million bill, as part of McLaren's 50 year anniversary. Each car is one of only 375, so rest assured, it'll be a unique ride. I'll say those things. I'm in the forest again, aren't I? Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For PD&D TV, I'm David Manti, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.